Shalom. Behold, how good and how pleasant is the dwelling of brothers together in unity. I want to start by saying thank you to the planning committee for inviting me to speak today. I am truly honored to be on the same platform as Mayor Leppert, Consul General Shlomo, and Rabbi Raskin. It is a great honor, and I thank you for it. As a pastor, I just want to start by sharing just a little bit about the Israel-related organizations that I'm a part of. Charles mentioned KUFI, as one of the senators calls us, KUFI. And the purpose of that group is to allow a single voice to speak out on behalf of Israel. And it's open for every pro-Israel church, ministry, or individual that would like to join. And we are only four years old and already the fastest growing, largest pro-Israel group in America. 467,000 members strong and have contributed millions of dollars to the Jewish humanitarian projects at home and in Israel. Every year we have a summit in Washington, D.C. where thousands of representatives coming from every state visit their congressmen to let them know that we support Israel. We support her right to exist. We support her right to the land. And we ask them nicely to vote and act accordingly. This past July, we had enough congressional appointments to cover 85% of the Congress. And we're not ever here to tell Israel what to do, but we sure don't mind telling Washington. The second pro-Israel organization I belong to is called Daughters for Zion, where I serve as Texas State Director. It's a women's prayer ministry under the umbrella of Kufi, and a major part of our mission is to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for the well-being of the people and the state of Israel. In my own church, we have had two major events so far that totally focused on Israel and the support. We've supported the Western Galilee Hospital and other Jewish organizations in Israel. And besides having several prayer groups of our own, we also have a group that meets once a month just to discuss Israel-related current events and the customs and cultural events in Israel. This group in our church has been meeting for over 15 years. So you can see that Israel and the Jewish people are high on our priority list. And that may be a real surprise to some of you, or maybe even a shock. And some of you may be wondering, why all this support for Israel? Well, I'm glad you asked. First, I think it's important for you to know that I'm aware that many in the Jewish community are questioning our intentions and wondering if we have a hidden agenda. Well, I understand these concerns. After all, Jewish and Christian relations have not always been so friendly, to say the least. And I realize that it may take a while for wounds to heal from the past. Terrible things have happened over many long centuries. But on the other hand, I do believe that if we will ride the wave of what God is doing, it will not take long to see a relationship miracle between Christians and Jews that our grandfathers couldn't even dream about. I'm also here today to shed some light on why evangelical, charismatic Christians support Israel. And I hope that it will help that miracle continue to unfold. We support Israel because we believe that the Bible is the word of God spoken through Moses and the ancient prophets of Israel. I believe that God meant it when he said in Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you, I will curse and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you. The rest of the book is filled with account after account of those who blessed the Jews, and they were blessed. And it's full of accounts of those who cursed the Jews, and it didn't work out so good for them. This declaration of God to Abraham has been proved out over thousands of years, and not just in the Bible. Nations that were once empires were reduced to insignificant shadows of what they once were. 
Others disappeared completely and are only spoken of now because scholars talk about them wondering just what happened. It's an interesting study to review the last century and to take note of what happens to nations right after making decisions against Israel. It's not only sobering, it's a living testimony that the promise of Genesis 12:1 is still very much in force today. If we do not lead charge to stand up for God's people, the Jews, and the land that he has given them, then who knows what destruction could be unleashed against our nation. The United States of America needs us to stand up for Israel. But the blessing and the curse is not just for the nations. It extends to every business, to every family, and every individual as well. I've been blessed and I've been cursed. Hmm, I think blessed is better. Another reason Christians should honor the Jewish people is because of their contributions that gave birth to the Christian faith. Jesus himself said in the book of John, salvation is of the Jews. Just look what the Jewish people have given to Christianity. The scripture all came by inspiration through Jews. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of course, all Jews. The prophets, all Jews. The first family of Christianity, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, all Jewish. The 12 apostles, all Jews, and the apostle Paul, also a Jew. Though Judaism needs no one to justify its existence, without the Jews and Judaism, Christianity cannot be justified. You are our spiritual root. Cut off the root and the branch will soon wither and die. Christians are to live their lives with Jesus as their example, and Jesus never denied his Jewishness. He referred to the Jewish people as his family. Matthew 25 says, Most certainly I tell you, inasmuch as you did it to the least of one of these, my brethren, and he never called the Gentiles his brethren, you have done it to me. We also read how he wept over Jerusalem because he could see that there were dark days waiting ahead. Shall we do any less? This brings me to my last point to make today. I could go on and on, but we'll save it for a cooler day. Reasonable, reasonable people should support Israel because it is a bastion of freedom and the only true ally we have in a volatile, suppressive Middle East. Reasonable people should see the enormous medical, scientific, artistic, economic, and moral contributions Jewish people have made to better humanity. But the 600 million plus Bible-believing, evangelical, charismatic Christians do not love Israel because it's reasonable. We love Israel because we love God. And if I am to love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my might, and all my strength, then I must love what he loves the way he loves. And if there is anything that the Bible makes clear, it is that God loves Israel. God loves Eretz Israel, the land. God loves Am Israel, the people. And another thing that he is very clear about, and that is that he is God and he changes not. His love for Abraham's seed is forever. His covenant with them is forever. They are the apple of his eye, and that is never going to change. So I say to you, my Jewish brethren, we stand with you. We stand with you against replacement theology that claims Christianity has replaced Ju Judaism. Ridiculous. God is big enough to have a wonderful, masterful plan for us all. We stand with you against anti-Semitism that's rapidly engulfing the world. 
We stand with you against the anti-Zionism that tries to rear its ugly head in Washington. Your struggle is our struggle. Your victory is our victory. We are in front of you to defend. We are beside you when you call. And we are behind you to encourage and remind you that you are not like any other race of people. You are called out by God, for God, to make him known to the nations. And that is what makes you special. Don't hold back. Let the whole world see that there is a God in Israel. Dare to be all that he has equipped you to be because his love for you is eternal and so is ours. Thank you. Thank you.